um, one of the things you got to was the crossovers section of the AVR. And so I was saying, you know, how you can get a more accurate crossover using the spatial audio calibration toolkit. And so Wendell was asking, how do we do that? Okay. So um, basically, let me share my screen here because I have one of the files open. Basically, what you're going to do here, Wendell, and anybody watching is you're going to go and turn your subwoofer off and put your speaker to full range. In this instance, I chose the center speaker. And I'm going to hit play here. And basically what's going to happen is we're going to call it out and then we're going to play tone. It's going to play tones all the way down. Can you hear that? Is it going? A little bit. You can hear it bit. slightly. Okay. So it's going to go all the way down to 16 hertz in increments, these increments here. And what you're supposed to do is just kind of listen to see where you don't hear the tone anymore. If you don't hear the tone at 40, then you might want to cross it over at 50. Now, again, your AVR is going to determine where you can actually cross it over at. Some of them will give you increments of 10 hertz. Some of them will only give you like 40, 60, 80. So if yours says 60 and you can kind of hear it at 50, then cross it over at 60, right? If you hear the tone at 30, try 40. It all depends, right? It depends on your system and how it's set up. And so you can do this for every one of your speakers. And the most important ones are which ones, Joe? I would say your LCR. Is that what you're talking about? I was going to say the high channels. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What are you talking? What are you saying? Crossing over what? Crossing. So, so the crossover points on the high channels is the hotly debated topic, right? Is it 100 hertz? Is it 120? Is it 150? Oh, I see what you mean. You're saying you're saying because those are usually smaller speakers, right? So you're gonna not want to drive them too hard. Exactly, or, or put too much low in information into those speakers. So then you can actually listen to the speakers uh, going through and um, figure that out. So, Wendell, that's how you would choose your crossover point per speaker, turn off your subwoofer, and set uh, all your speakers to full range, and then run each of those and listen and see. That's it. Yeah, I I typically like to listen to it at a decent volume, like about like where I'd normally listen to movies. And it's not when I can't hear the sound, it's when there's a significant drop. Like sure, you'll hear right. all the bones, do, do, do. And then it's like, there's a significant drop. That's, you might that's, that's kind of, hear. that's what I mean. That's what mm -hmm. I mean. Significant drop, yeah. Um, also, it's, it's handy for, you can still use that for the LFE. Sometimes you're able to find like where you have nulls too. Mm-hmm. Like you'll hear a tone, it'll go through all of them. Maybe your system is good down to 16 hertz, but for some reason, 80 sounds low, right? You're like, oh, wonder why that's low. So of course, all this stuff can be done using measurements, but a lot of folks don't want to do measurements, right? It might be a hassle for them to take out a mic, but it's pretty easy to put this in, listen, and get a very good idea of what's happening. And if you need more precision, we do have sweeps also. So if yep. you wanted to use a mic, do a sweep, and then you could pinpoint exactly where it is. Yeah. But you want to know, if you play that LFE track on the crossover points, you turn your subwoofer on, mm -hmm. you cross over all your other speakers, and you play that LFE track, whoo, and you turn it up, man, mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you will start hearing your house do some funny things. <laughs> What's, what it's also useful for is when you turn on your sub and let's say you have it crossed over at 80, what you want to hear is a smooth transition. Yep. So when it goes from 120, 100, 80, whatever, 60, whatever it's it's doing, 40, I don't remember the numbers, but it should sound like a smooth transition and it shouldn't it shouldn't sound like main speaker, main speaker, subwoofer. Right? Right. It should be hard to tell that uh, there is a transition. It should be nice and smooth. Definitely, you you don't want a hole in the response there because that means that you are not getting proper summation and something is out of phase, right? That's your main speakers are fighting your sub. So it's a quick way to check. And uh, yeah, 
I, I'm appreciating it more and more because I realize not everybody's going to do what I do. Take out a mic every every yeah. minute to measure something. It's just a pain. Yeah. 